This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and now for something different, yet not so different. What does that mean? This is the Vio Z. Now, I've reviewed Vios before since Sony basically separated them off into their own independent company several years ago now, and this is the highest end one. And why do I say it's different yet the same? Well, it's a very unusual 3D carbon fiber 14 inch Ultrabook with a very powerful CPU in it for an Ultrabook kind of machine, but uh, the Vio Z is an old name in the industry. In fact, if you look at this channel, I mean, it's an embarrassingly old video, but like eight years ago, we reviewed the Vio Z, which at the time was unusually powerful. It had like, you know, a workstation level processor inside and its own proprietary external GPU back before things like Thunderbolt made that possible on a more universal scale. So it was a pretty neat machine and it was pretty pricey and it was carbon fiber back then too. So they reinvented it now and it's nice to see a redesign here. This is a little different from some of the other values that we reviewed, but it's also very expensive. We're gonna look at it now. So yeah, in the United States, we only get the signature black edition, which is the more expensive one. Those of you who are overseas, you might be able to get the one that has like a Core i5 or a full HD display for less money. And there are less expensive Vio laptop models out there, but this one starts at like 3579. And the most expensive configuration is $4,179. You get a Core i7 for that, and not just any Core i7, we'll talk about that, a 4K wide gap matte non-touch display, Windows Hello IR scanner, and some of those accoutrement you would expect for a higher end or businessy laptop, and that's still their focus with BIOS as business, like uh, presence detection, which we've seen HP do and Lenovo do. So if you walk up to the laptop, it wakes up, and then it can use the Windows Hello IR camera to automatically log you in. Likewise, if you step away, it can lock the machine. So good for security sake. That's pretty nice there. We have fast, oh my God, so fast, M.2 NVMe SSD that is upgradable and your choice of 16 or 32 gigs of RAM. You can see the specs on screen, that is fast RAM that is soldered on board. So why is the SSD so fast? It's not that they've sourced some miracle SSD, is that because of this new Intel 11th gen 35 watt chipset, we have PCIe 4 here, so a much faster interface to the SSD. So the SSD speed that we see is about twice as fast as the fastest SSD we've seen before. Will this make your life very different? Probably not. If you're doing lots and lots of file writes and whatever you're doing all the time as part of your workflow, then yes. Otherwise, no, but still it's pretty nifty to see such a jump in performance here, especially on the Intel side of things lately. Speaking of Intel, this is the new Intel 11th gen 35 watt CPU. So Ultrabooks have 15 watt CPUs and in fact the competing Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano we recently reviewed uses a kind of lower end of the 15 watts. So this is sort of like a Nano but way more powerful and way more expensive too. Uh -huh. But anyway, it's, this is competing with the AMD Ryzen 35 watt HS CPUs, for those of you who are geeky enough to follow that, which is a compelling chipset, both the Intel and the Ryzen versions, and in fact we'll see these in some of the mid-tier gaming laptops, like the ASUS Rogue Tough series of gaming laptops. But where Ryzen has eight cores, this Intel CPU has four cores. They're quite powerful cores, and the single core speed, which is something Intel is always proud of, is very good on this. But the multi-core score obviously is going to be limited by the fact it has four cores. Still, it's a lot faster than your average Ultrabook with a 15 watt CPU. And we have Intel Iris XE integrated graphics here, which were a big jump up from older Intel integrated graphics, so that's nice. You're not going to be playing Cyberpunk on this sort of thing, but well. But with this CPU, and obviously this is not meant to be a gaming laptop, it's more a business and productivity, uh, you could play Civ 6 and have a great time of it because the CPU is pretty powerful on this. So a lot of power, a super thin laptop. This laptop is about a kilogram in weight, which is 2.32 pounds, right? They do have dual fans inside and they're fancy pants, nice metal cage fans and all that sort of thing. And it does help. But if you're pushing the machine, you will hear the fans, believe me. Uh, the surface temperatures, because carbon fiber doesn't get super hot to the touch, aren't that bad, which is a good thing. And the way the lid lifts up helps with a little bit of elevation on the bottom. But, um, you know, 
This is for people who are doing a lot of number crunching, for example. You might need more CPU performance. This is not for multimedia type people, given the integrated graphics so much, you know, for multimedia developers. If you're doing something like Handbrake, for example, because video encoding can be very CPU dependent and not even use the GPU, you'll see a performance jump there. Um, so, yeah. You will get the fan noise here. This is not a Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano, which is much quieter and cooler running because it's a lot less powerful, too. So let's talk a little bit about the build quality. Back since VIOs were Sony VIOs, they've been using carbon fiber. And the flex on this is quite reduced. It is 3D molded carbon fiber. They say similar technology is what's used in airplanes. So the lid can be torsion, but not a whole lot. The whole thing feels reasonably rigid. And of course, it makes it very light and it doesn't conduct a lot of heat. So all that stuff's very nice. Now, carbon fiber can maybe crack more easily than other materials. So I, even though they say it's past some mill spec tests and all that sort of thing, I would be a little careful with, with it. In terms of ports, we have an HDMI 2.0 port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and a headphone jack. So it could be worse, but again, for something this thin and this light, that's all they could fit on here. And they do make other bio models that have a miraculous number of ports, actually, for the size of the machine. And finally, we are seeing Thunderbolt on a bio, which is nice. The keyboard on this is pretty good, 1.5 millimeters of travel. Again, being a business-oriented laptop, they pride themselves on the keyboards. Uh, whereas before, I found VIO keyboards a little bit cramped, not as kind of modernized as some others. This one feels like it has more spread. I still feel like the keycaps are a little smaller than average, though, with quite a bit of space between them. It's something you can adjust to, though. The tactile feel is pretty nice on this. It doesn't feel that deep in terms of travel, but the feedback's nice. And the trackpad on it works well too. It's a Microsoft Precision, so no complaints there. The display on this is quite lovely. We do have that 4K display, so well, it should be, and it's wide gamut. You can see the specs on screen for that. Uh, it's natural looking. It's IPS, so it's not garish and all that sort of thing. So if you were doing something that required some degree of color accuracy, it's pretty good, and the color calibration is nice on it too. So it also gets quite bright, which is important for business users of all kinds, even small business owners, because you might be taking this out somewhere in the field and need to be able to see it. And because it's matte, yeah, it's quite visible. Good stuff there. Other goodies, of course, is Intel Wi-Fi 6, which is standard for this platform. We have Thunderbolt 4 here, which is USB-C connector based, and that's also USB-C, the fast kind, 20 gigabit per second. Supports display out, supports charging in. In fact, the charger is a USB-C charger, and charging out to the charger devices. We have a fingerprint scanner integrated into the power button. It works okay. It's a narrow slit, sort of like we've seen on some phones, and I like the bigger scanner better, but hey, you also have the Windows Hello IR camera, and the usual VIO touches, things like if you don't want it to charge to 100% to preserve overall battery life over the years, you've got that available to you. When it comes to upgradable internals, you're looking at the M.2 SSD. I, I didn't open this up because typically it's a little bit of a challenge with, with VIOs. You actually unscrew the bottom usually and then lift up the keyboard deck. This is a very expensive machine. We have carbon fiber, which is a little more delicate. So I didn't mess with it, but M.2 SSD, pretty much that's it. And of course, you could replace the 53 watt hour battery. Speaking of the battery, that's a pretty decent capacity, as you'd expect to have in a premium Ultrabook. And you get a compact 65 watt fast charger. And battery life in this obviously is going to depend on what you do. But our test of mixed productivity, which includes Office, some streaming video, and social media, that sort of stuff, with the display set at 200 nits of brightness. And we averaged about nine hours, which is not bad considering how powerful the CPU is. Now, if you're pushing that CPU and you, you, know, you can, that's a powerful high watt CPU, then expect lesser battery life. So that's for light work. Medium work, more like five, six. So that's the VIO Z for 2021. And I, I know for most of you, this is going to be something that you watch with interest, but you're probably not going to actually go out and buy one of these given the price tag on it. And as always, VIO does their own thing. I mean, nobody makes a one kilogram 3D molded carbon fiber laptop with incredibly fast CPUs inside and a lush 4K display. And they've gone ahead and done it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about it.